Hey YouTube, this is Ruchika. I'm basically a data stage developer. So today uh, I thought I'm gonna give a little introduction about the data stage. This is my first tutorial about the data stage. Basically a few years back while I was like learning the data stage, I couldn't find any uh, good tutorials. So yeah, after some time I thought, uh, okay, I, it's time for me to share my knowledge with the other guys who faced similar problems problem like me so yeah uh, so this is my first tutorial about data stage and here we go so before data stage before learning data stage I assume that you guys need to have like a shell scripting knowledge basic unique commands and how to write like shell scripts and SQL, street SQL language, Oracle SQL, and good knowledge about data warehouse concept and PLSQL too. So, assuming you have like knowledge about all these, I am now moving to the data stage. So, we just can't move to the data stage without knowing anything about its history, right? So, yeah, basic history. I don't want to dig more. So, basic history. It's it's an ETL tool so basically extract transform and load so we extract the data from the source and perform the transformation and perform or apply the transformation rules and then load load the data load the data into the target so basically we are extracting and then transforming and then loading apart from data stage we also have other tools like ab initio informatica yeah but my primary focus is on data stage so this was first developed by Lee Shuffler. I hope I pronounced it right. I'm uh, sorry guys. And he first named it as Stage. Then in 2001, Essential Software acquired this tool and developed the first time parallelism concept. And in 2005, after uh, Essential Software, IBM acquired the Data Stage tool. Once IBM acquired the data stage tool, it released many versions, I guess starting from 6, I guess, 6, 7, 7.1, 7.5, and then released in 2008, it released whole package, IBM information server, it has like whole package, data stage, quality stage, information analyzer, fast track, and master data management, and many other tools then uh, after i mean after 2008 it has like released several versions but the most common version in the recent projects is 8.5 and yeah i mean there have been some other projects which are still trying to upgrade from like older versions uh, but in the market as of now you could see like versions people dealing with 7.5 8 or 8.1 and 8.5 is the like the most commonest version uh, I I didn't work myself on 9.1, but I have seen a few people going for 9.12. So yeah, that's pretty much about the history. So because we have talked about different versions of the data stage, it's absolutely necessary for us to learn about the differences between the versions. Because obviously, if you tell a guy that I have worked with 7.5 and 8.1, then the first question he's gonna ask you is so what did you what did you notice or observe the differences between the two versions right so that's a basic question even that was like the uh, this 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 is like one of the interview questions primary interview questions I guess so yeah let's come to the difference between the versions in the seventh version the data stage is platform dependent it means that basically the data stage is built on unix server right so if we have like access to unix server we did not have separate access like we did not we did not have uh, we did not separately raise access for the data stage but whereas in 8.8 uh, 8 was from 8 version the data stage they made it plan from independent even though we have access to unix server we need to separately raise requests for the accessing data stage so that's basically platform dependent and independent and the other important thing is that in the previous version like 7x version and the before one the repository is file based 
so there is like chance of corrupting the files and all the problems but from the 8 version they made it database database based repository repository is like storage of information of all the jobs table definitions I, I'll, I'll just show you how the repository look li looks like so the name the repository has is xmeta database so so basically like uh, it's uh, it's a two tire architecture 7x version is a two tire ar architecture uh, two tire means two tier means uh, basically the unix data stage there is like bottom unix server and the data stage is built on the top of the unix so two tier and uh, this uh, the 8x version is three tier whereas like because I said there is Xmeta database, this is basically like a bottom Unix server, then Xmeta database in which the repository, all the files and everything is stored, and then on the top of that, the data stage is built. So yeah, that's three tier. And uh, coming to the 7x version, there are four components. There were four components, namely a designer client, administrator client, director client, and manager to manager client. But from 8x version, they merged this manager client into the designer client. So there is, there are now only three components. And in 7x version, there are no concept of parameter sets. We need to have like individual parameter for every job. But from 8x version, the parameter concept, uh, parameter sets concept were introduced. We can just create a param whole set of parameter and give it a like parameter set name, and then we can use this parameter set. Uh, anywhere in the whole project, so we need not give it's uh, we not we need not give every parameter. It's tiresome, right? Yeah, so that's pretty cool. The other one uh, is drawback in surrogate key generator stage. We have like uh, whenever we need to have surrogate key generator when we run because it's surrogate key generator, right? Because we need to have unique thing. So, but when we ha when we run this in the previous versions. When we run for, let's say we have run this and it has created 1 to 100. And the next time we run, it it, it didn't create from 101. Uh, it again started creating a, a key generator from 1. So that's that's not uh, that's not the right thing. Uh, so from 8x version, they enhanced this. Uh, they enhanced the drawback. So from 8x version, if we, if we, if we, they introduced an option called uh, uh, create uh, from the highest generator value start from the highest generator value so when we click that when we run for the second time the data stage gonna create the keys from 101 starting from 101 so yeah along with that uh, they introduced other stages like uh, connector stages uh, connector stages for the database database connectivity and other pivot enterprise stage and SAP pack I guess yeah there are like many other stages were introduced in 8x version and other thing is uh, only few functions were there in transformer stage whereas in 8x version they introduced many uh, type conversion functions date hand date for date conversion and null handling functions and the other thing uh, pretty cool is uh, they introduced in like quick find option quick find of option for job search previously in 7x version we need to search manually for every job so yeah these are the basic differences and important differences between the two versions so as I said uh, there were like three different components so let's see uh, what exactly uh, the three components does so the first is administrator client basically this uh, we, we don't data stage developer works on the designer client and data stage administrator works with the administrator client so yeah so the administ data stage administrator basically creates deletes and modifies projects and he, he has like specific authorities or permissions to create and delete the data stage users who could use what and everything and he can have like specific parameters given uh, and then properties and we have and, and he can have like installation of nls which is national language support because we have we, if we need to deal with uh, some special characters or some other language characters so yeah basically he does everything on that and the designer client uh, is the, the place where data stage uh, developer uh, is more more involved so basically as i said he creates and uh, he creates source and target definitions what is source and what is target and then uh, before the uh, and between the source and target he performs all the transformation rules and then uh, once he has every idea he then designs and develops the code 
uh, I mean coding the sense designs a job and uh, and from the data and from the designer client we can also import and export to and from the data stage we can import and export data stage jobs basically uh, this this thing import in, in, importing and exporting it was previously in the manager but since the manager client was merged with designer client now we can do it from designer too and the other important thing is director client uh, so basically this this is this is a place where we can validate schedule run and monitor ds jobs it can we can have like see the log of all the jobs what's going wrong and where is going wrong and everything we can we will deal with more uh, in detail in future coming videos so yeah so basically what is a data stage job it's basically uh, i would say it has data stage has pretty cool uh, graphical representation so yeah you would love that so basically graphical representation of data flow right from we need to have source and a target so the data needs to be flow from source to target uh, and between that we can apply the transformation rule so this basic is called uh, this basic thing flow of data from that uh, source to target performing all the transformations is called ds job i mean ds in the sense data stage so the, there are basically three types of data stage jobs server jobs which runs on single node uh, we'll discuss more about node in uh, next video and the parallel jobs which runs on multiple nodes this is where most of your projects gonna work on parallel and sequence jobs I don't think in real time we are gonna use server jobs much and the other thing is sequence jobs so as the name suggests we can have like parallel and service jobs and we can just trigger them uh, by by giving all the things and we can just like make them run in sequence well, like one after other so that's that's sequence jobs so yeah because we know about uh, server and parallel jobs so let's come to the differences as I said uh, server jobs runs on a single node whereas parallel jobs on multiple nodes and server because it's server it executes on data stage server engine whereas this parallel jobs executes on data stage parallel engine uh, because server runs on a single node, uh, it it gonna handle like less volume of data. But because a parallel node, uh, parallel uh, jobs run on multiple nodes, we can handle like huge volume of data. Uh, and again, it's single node, so so slow data processing, obviously. And we have like multiple nodes or multiple resources. I say, we we have like faster data processing. And in server, there are only less number of components. Components in the sense like we have only a few stages, a uh, few stages in the palette. Whereas in parallel jobs, we have more number of uh, stages or more number of components and features. And, and the other important difference is in the server jobs, all the, like in the background, all the data stage code is converted into the basic language. Whereas in parallel jobs, in the background, the data stage code is converted into OCOSH. I'm sorry, it's OSH or just straight shell script code. Uh, except transformer because it has uh, it, it needs to have like some uh, C++ compiler code too. So yeah, that's pretty much my introduction video. Hope you all liked it. And uh, in my coming next video, I'll discuss about uh, what are the nodes we were talking about. I said I said parallel and uh, server, right? So I'll discuss what are exactly are the nodes and the configuration file. It's very, very important, APD config file. It's very important for the data stage to run. And how to create the table definitions, I'll show uh, how, what exactly, um, and how exactly we can create table definitions on my data stage tool, and how to create parameter sets, and how to create the server jobs. Yep, so that's pretty much my introduction in the first video. Thank you guys, thanks for listening, bye-bye.